Info Plus for genuine information. Excellency, you are very popular on my show. I think it's many times that I took your interview and my viewers probably know you. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me on your show again. Yeah, Excellency, actually, um, before going into the AIBT case, let me um, ask you a couple of questions which is related to that scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we already talked, I mean, informally that like... Um, this year, only more than 20,000 students are supposed to go to Australia yeah. um, in this 2018, I guess. Yeah. Um, so in this current scenario, you, you, we all know that number is going very, very high. Yeah. Um, I used to ask this question before also, but again, I want to put in a different way. Is this number sustainable or not? What's your suggestion to especially those parents who are just planning to send their children to Australia for further study? Australia is, of course, top destinations at the moment. Yeah. And first choice for um, study abroad. Yeah, and, and look, and that's, that's a fair question. And it's something that you know, we're looking at and examining um, because... Um, before I was posted here as an ambassador, yeah. we were looking at much smaller numbers yes. um, in, in Australia, like to the tune of um, 16,000, yes. 16, 20,000. In the last two years, it has had gone up to uh, 49,000 Nepalis currently studying in Australia. And so we look at, at a number of the drivers for that. Um, um, obviously, I think... Yeah, the quality of the education is is a key element. Exactly. Um, perhaps um, Australia is overly efficient in terms of pr visa processing because we now have a, a consolidated yes. team yes. Um, in New Delhi that are providing us the capacity to actually um, uh, process far more visas than we ever had uh, or been able to before. Um, mm -hmm. We recognise too that there is that attraction of... Um, of being able to work in Australia for 20 hours a week when yes. you study. Um, but it's very important to know that those 20 hours a week uh, are not intended to provide a Nepali with um, the means to live in Australia. Australia is a high cost yes. environment. So yes. that 20 hours, as my, my daughter goes to university at the moment, she works she probably around 20 at hours. UTS. She's at UTS, <laughs> yes. Um, but the purpose of that is to allow um, Nepalis and other nationals to actually have that other little level of interaction with Australian society. It's not designed to be able to either support yourselves in Australia or to send money home okay. um, because obviously that's an enormous um, distraction. So, exactly. But, so we are looking at um, the sustainability. We want it to be sustainable. We want to protect the reputation of Australian um, institutions of Australia as a quality service provider mm -hmm. and we also want to ensure that um, the Nepalis who choose Australia or choose any international destination yes. it's, a, it's a big choice yes um, that they have the best opportunity to perform as well as they possibly can and to gain that qualification that will hold them in great stead in future life so we are watching it um, we are working with the education consultancy sector. We're working with government. We are having conversations to okay. ensure okay. Um, that we have strong governance within the sector. Yes. Um, but ultimately, um, I mean, the responsibility does lie with the student and you can't devolve all responsibility to a consultant. Um, we do have the um, www.studyinaustralia.gov.au website which provides a whole breadth of, of information yeah, it so it's, it's easy for perhaps prospective students just to double check what they're being told and to ensure that any course that they're choosing um, is actually right for them and, and what they want to do later on. Excellency, do you indicate that the process will get tougher in coming days in terms of like GT compliance or something like that? Oh, look, I'm pretty confident that our systems are, are very yes. robust, yes. so I don't anticipate okay. that at the moment. Um, if we do get a sense that 
certain actors in the consultancy space are perhaps not doing the right thing or even if institutions are not doing the right thing, we will Definitely. examine that and we'll take any necessary course of action. Okay, Excellency. Um, as you um, have visited many places in, in Nepal and you know personally many consultancies also, how do you see the practices of consultancy? Because um, you know that most is mostly students root from the consultancy to Australia. So yeah. do you sense that, I mean, they are giving proper information to the students so that, I mean, they are going into a right path or right directions and um, sense that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not in the room when, okay. when that, that advice is being given. Um, but, I mean, as a rule of thumb, um, I'd recommend if, if a student chooses a consultant and they don't have to choose a consultant, there are avenues for online yes. um, information. Websites and everything. But, but, if, yeah, but if they do choose, then... Um, choose a, um, an agent, um, particularly in the tertiary sector, that doesn't charge for their services. Yes. Because that is a firm indication, apart from the fact that it saves them money, but it's also a firm indication that they have those, those appropriate linkages with, with the institutions. Okay. Now, Excellency, let me put a question um, regarding the case of AIVT. Especially, this yeah, yeah. is a huge concern of yeah. Nepali parents, and we used to receive many, many questions from them. You know, what could be the possible help for uh, Nepali, especially parents, because more than thousand of students studying at AIVT, yeah. and there are other institutions also lined up. I mean, in the same process, yeah. maybe other students get suffered. At this point of time, what's your message to especially those parents who are really feeling i mean um sad and what could be the possible options can you give like these are the possible options for those students who are studying there aibt um and and, and there has been you know, conversations in terms of um why were visas issued for for these kind of courses yes. but but the fact remains that um there, there's no locked link um, okay. between a course okay and, and an occupation. Okay. Okay. So, um, there, for example, this particular nursing course would potentially provide um, uh, the certification um, to work in the aged care sector, for example. But because it's not ANMAC accredited um, with the Nursing and Midwifery um, Council, um, it is, does not provide a pathway to Australian accredited nursing qualification. Mm -hmm. um, now that should be quite clear in any um, documentation um, offer, uh, um, education offer letters um, by the institution and if it's not then that would be subject to a whole separate process in terms of consumer um, law and, and, and legal recourse there. But the, the advice that we're giving uh, students at the moment is that it's still operating mm -hmm. as, as a business. It has perfect right of appeal as okay. well. Okay. Um, that in order to abide by the conditions of their visa and to stay in Australia, they need to continue to attend um, lectures and coursework. And if at some stage, um, and you know, I don't want to preempt what the final decision will be okay. or, or the response to the appeal, Definitely. but there are um, mechanisms to and a responsibility of the provider to support transition to an alternative course. Okay. And again, like, um, uh, if we see the um, point of view of the students, like, um, what, what are the other areas? If, you, if they really want to quit the study or want to get credit to the other, other institutions, uh, because they already spent one and a half or two years um, yeah, no, exactly. at that institutions. Exactly. Uh, Excellency, is there any, any um, way forward for um, Well, as I students? understand it, I mean, there would be assessments because made they in have terms to, of... They have to get, I mean, secure the seven um, uh, on IELTS or yeah, something Yeah, and, like and, that. and actually that's, that's actually an important issue that you ra raise as well yeah. in terms of, of, of the English proficiency. Exactly. So, um, for those students who may be um, um, studying and who don't have that level of language proficiency, mm -hmm. that will be a real barrier. I mean, you need um, a level seven yes. um, to um, ensure that once you've um, completed a 
ANMAC accredited nursing diploma, um, that you then have the demonstrated okay. language proficiency okay. to um, get that, that nursing uh, qualification. Okay. Um, so there's, there's two steps to it. It's, it's the completing the coursework and also having the language proficiency. Okay. Now, if, if there are Nepali students studying at, at institutions um, that do not have that level of proficiency, that could be a block in any case to pursuing a nursing qualification. Anything for the parents, finally? For the, for the parents, look, I think it's really important for parents to actually be involved in the decision-making of their their kids Don't as well. Don't children alone. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, well, it, it, it's a joint um, exactly. decision, um, you know, and I know as, 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 as a parent. parent of a university <laughs> student that um, we were taking a very firm interest um, okay. in uh, the courses that my daughter was, was interested in pursuing, particularly given that I'll be funding that, that course. Okay. Um, so I think my advice to parents um, and, and prospective students is to engage very early on, have those um, conversations with your with your son, with your daughter, um, with um, if you choose a consultancy with with the consultants itself. Check the website and just be part of that triangulation and double checking that um, the course that you're looking to enrol in is actually the one that is right for you. Thank you, Eclincy. Thank you so much for your time. No, absolute Thank pleasure. You.